you, you should take liberties with people. Do you know what I mean? And if you weren't strong enough to deal with things, then it got taken from you and you got told to sit down and wind your neck in. Do you know what I mean? And some people got beaten, stabbed and shot mm -hmm. for getting moved the way, strategically moved out of the way. Like, you've got to have bag in you, you've got to have confrontation. That's why that world's so shit. There's no unity, there's no coming together. It's all ag, it's all yeah, drama. Right. And then what it is, is if everybody worked together, everybody would be Keiko. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Everybody would be Keiko if they yeah. all got on with each other. That's right. You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. It's like the next day in here. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast, live and direct. You know where central London or central as you need to be. You don't need to be anywhere else. It's pointless. It's too far away and it's getting cold. Everyone's having a good morning. Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. Of course, everyone's got the Kellervision app. We don't stop on this one. Uh, oh, for those of you who are avid followers of the, the Killer Keller podcast, you'll know that this isn't the first time this gentleman's been in. A lot has changed since we first uh, first met. Uh, I think, I believe it's probably one of your first podcasts you've done with me, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Don Marvin Herbert. How are you, my brother? Good to be back, good to be back. Do you know what it is? <laughs> it's uh, been eventful, mate. It's been yes, eventful. Let's get closer to that. I was going to lose you. Yeah, it's been eventful. It's been <laughs> eventful. It? Yeah, it's been really eventful. Do you know what? Yeah. It's been enjoyable. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been stressful. Yeah. It's been roller coasterish, up and down, <laughs> but full of success. So that's the main thing. You know what I mean, like plenty of uh, adversity mm. to drive, jump, and swerve around. Mm. But ultimately, the success is on the horizon. So it's mm. all good. It's all good. The charm in this man's smile. If you're uh, listening and not watching, you won't see the glint in this man's eye. I swear to God. I remember when you came here the first time. And oh my God, I think both of us were very aware that, that the conversations we were going to have in its entirety were quite, quite of, of, a, of a grand proportion, weren't they? Yeah, it's just honesty from my perspective, though. So people can take it how they like, but it's about being real, being honest, and people being able to learn from what you do, sort of how you behave, how you conduct yourself, mm. a role model, so to speak. So we're all supposed to be role models mm. to the younger generations to perpetuate our species. And I've only just realised that I used my unique skill for the wrong purposes and products prior mm. to transformation, you know. Mm. So I'm happy, mm. I'm happy. I'm happy and I'm happy. Mm. Do you know what mm. I mean? Mm. A little bit of stress in there, yeah. but my missus and other people get more stressed than me. <laughs> <laughs> you sure about that? No, no, they do. Look, in the back of my mind, yeah, I don't care mm. how much money is owed. I don't care who's knocking on the door. I don't care mm. about bills. I don't care because... The world's upside down at the minute, right? No one's responsible for what's happening. So yeah, that's true. Everybody's been sort of affected by not being able to work or mm -hmm. earn money like they used to, right? Especially in special, in certain sectors. So mm. where I work, it's been very hard to make money. So mm. um, a few things have happened over the last couple of years, which I'll be uh, broadcasting on uh, my channel in the next mm. couple of weeks about the problems I've had facing with money loss and eviction and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? So I've been evicted from my house, I've been evicted from my studio, oh, know, all since COVID. So what I'm going to be demonstrating on my wow. next broadcasting sort of campaign mm. is that you're going to go through headache. Mm. You're going to have problems, you're going to have dramas, people are going to test you, people are going to push you, people are going to prod you, people are going to take liberties. It's and it's you ultimately that's got to keep control and not react mm. and just do what's correct and come out the other side mm. and just eat the losses if there's losses because what I've got for a brighter day coming now is a lot better than what I might have had mm. if I decided to stab shoot or hurt somebody, you know? Yeah. And uh, 
It's like a far cry from that now when I think about... I mean, I, I, fortunately, I didn't know you at that, at that point. I've only, always known you as, as Marv, you know? Mm. And now we're in the same crew together. To you, is, you know, this is even more biblical moments. We've got two TU members inside the place. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know I mean? But seriously, like, it's, it's, it feels like such a distant memory, that and all the other stories that you told us on the last podcast. I mean, you, leaps and bounds, isn't it? It's, you know what it is? It's progression, mm. right? So I'm actually showing by demonstrating how I'm living and what I'm achieving, mm. that everything's possible. Anything's possible for anyone. Like, mm. No one can say, oh, you can't achieve if you've got a criminal record. You mm. can't achieve if you've been in prison. You can't achieve if you've done this. You can't achieve if you've done that. Mm. Okay, fair enough. Let's analyse the situation. Mm. Marvin Herbert, one of the baddest men on the road, one of the most lucrative criminals that my environment had, mm. do you know what I mean? Went on to go to Downing Street went on to go to schools, colleges and prisons. Mm. I'm going on to do books, movies and programmes. So mm. I've been on so many shows and so many podcasts and so many platforms over the last two years. It's, it's evident mm. that the passion, the drive and the sort of processes that I'm using and going through is what the road could take a leaf out of. It's, it's, it's work ethic, isn't it? It's drive and work ethic. It, no, listen, we've all got that. Yeah. So when people say that, like, criminals are not lazy people. No. They got, wake up with no money and they be. go out and get it. That's yeah? right. So they're not lazy people. What it is is the product they deal with is what's traumatic. It's the product that creates the problems. Mm. It's the product that creates the trauma. It's the product that creates the deaths. So if you start dealing with another product, then you're going to have a better outcome. And that's all I'm doing, transferring my skills into a different platform, and that's what I'm doing now. So I offer opportunities to people that want to transcend their life into a legitimate way by cleaning their hands and coming on board and just finding out what special skill and talent they got and creating a business around that. Like, look, you and I, look yeah, what I've right. done. That's right. Like, I know I'm a talker, I'm an entertainer but from a different perspective. So what I've done, I've made myself a product, I've existed on the social media platform, and I've grown to the capacity that I've got to, right? Mm -hmm. So I know I'm supposed to do this stuff. So other people are going to be musicians, other people are going to be technical, other people are going to be sort of um, logistical, other people are going to be artistic. So there's jobs for everybody. That's right. It's about creating businesses, so that's what we're setting out to do. You know, and we're even changing the platforms on even the social reform, right? So now graffiti is becoming legal found the programmes that we're running in Camden, right, and things we're doing amongst Wicked. the groups, right? Yeah. So now we've got a shutter campaign in Camden, yeah, through um, Camdominium. Yeah, hold on, Camdemonium, yeah. yeah. PIC Camdemonium. inside the PIC, place. PIC, Ollie on. Sylvester, That's and right. what's the other guy? Uh, the mighty Xander. There we go. And they're doing amazing stuff, and that's changing. Yeah. Obviously now the prisons are employing um, HGV drivers, they're training people for the civic works in the fibre optics. So now it's not wrong or frowned upon to employ an ex-offender. Yeah. And I think that's because of initiatives yeah. we've been pushing for the last three, four years. Mm -hmm. I mean, soon, and you've heard it here, people will be travelling abroad on licences. Right, so I'm setting things up now. So I've planted a seed now so everyone can see what we develop in the future. But I will have it so I will employ... English people on licence from prison to work abroad. And that's what I'm working towards now. So I'm looking to change the whole narrative in crime doesn't pay or crime's beneficial or crime's the way forward. Do you know what I'm saying? Because crime doesn't pay. So I'm changing the narrative that people have thinking you're going to be rich from crime. and it's, Because it's not true. No, it's not true. It's not true. In other words, like I say to everyone, mm. like I say to everyone, right, tell me the history of every major gangster on the planet and tell me how they retired. Yeah, through that. Do you know what I'm saying? Facts. So, none of them have died no. in a house on the hill, feet up. <laughs> like maybe 1% that you've never even heard of slip through. Do you know what I'm saying? But mm. the majority of people end up in a box, in a grand, or in prison forever. And that's what that world has to offer. So we're mm. changing the narrative through the trainings, processes, and projects we're setting up in football, boxing, media, music. 
you know, and that's what's coming yeah. for the 2022. Yeah, can I just re up? Because for those of you that have just walked out of some sort of underground bunker and don't know what's going on here and don't know about Marv, I mean, the, 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 the facts speak a thousand words. The, the content that he puts out, ridiculous. And, and again, we met very early doors when you were just, these were just ideas formulating your drive, tenacity, and determination, applying what your skills, your skills were in one in one trade, quote unquote, and then putting it into you're you're an entrepreneur now. You're a you're a coach. You're a manager. You're a, I mean, it's ridiculous. Spokesperson. You, I mean, you you attack, attack, attack. And I've seen you work so many times, and you're just ever present. You always show up on time. You are always represent. Like there was, I never hear a huff. I never hear a complaint. I always hear, no, we're doing this. We're doing it. We're fucking doing it. I tell you, man, honestly, I, I do. I get goosebumps talking about because I think to myself, man, Marv, man, like, you know, as a mate, it's like, it's fucking wicked to see you grow, you know? Yeah. But it's all, like you said, it's down to that work ethic of product. Yeah. Right, so why I'm here is because I had a, a process, I had work to do, mm. and because we're friends, we can do anything at any time. Mm -hmm. I said, right, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. If you want to do it, we can do it mm -hmm. after this. We can do it then, mm -hmm. we can do it here. So it's about getting everything done that needs to be done. So it's not my convenience that I worry about. Mm -hmm. It's everybody else's convenience because mm. what I've started to adopt on this transitional journey is that I am not important, okay? So the principles that I work with now are adding value, mm. yeah, and work ethic. So I am not important. The job and the project is important. That's so cold. Do you understand? Like, yeah, of course. So no matter how tired I am, no matter how sleepy I am, no matter how upset I am, no matter who I am, that project has to move forward and we have to achieve that goal. So mm. I'm not important and everything we put in place isn't important apart from the end goal. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So we get all the right team players involved to each reach the end goal and that's all we do now you know that's the same strategy i'm using in everything and it seems to be working how much of a governor do you have to play because it seems to me that you like you say you've got an op you've got a system that you operate right that's another thing right i'm not a governor i'm only marvin herbert who's excellent at doing what i do mm -hmm. right? so if i want someone to run my operations i'm not going to do that i'll get ah. someone who's good at running operations okay I've got to send emails or communicate with certain people that I don't know how to communicate with, then I'll have someone who's good at communicating on that level. So mm. I'm growing a team to plug into the world where I want to be. Because mm. what I've noticed is a lot of people try to do it themselves. Like, and when you don't speak the right language, you don't open the right doors. Mm. So... The reason why I've grown is because I haven't rung everybody, I haven't emailed everybody, I haven't tried to get hold of everybody. Other people that speak that language have done that for me. Yeah. I am the product, but I haven't got the... Well, I never had the sort of... What's it called when you're articulate? Okay. I never had the articulateness Art to articulation. communicate. Yeah. Artic with the next level of mm -hmm. industry. Mm. Because when you've got to prepare bids and licenses and like contracts... Like, yeah, it's a language. It's, it's a like, language yeah. that you need to understand. So me trying to do that language is wrong. Mm. And it's about getting the right team. So I acquire the right team to achieve the right goals. And as long as everybody plays their part, there ain't no governors. Mm. Because ultimately, we are the team. Mm. So we're all the governors, if that makes sense. And then you're eating, and then that's the, that's the whole team happy. Yeah, harmony is the word I like to use. Yeah. And everybody gets paid on the bad, add value principle that they bring. Mm. And you get your percentages, and you get your wages, or you get your whatever based on the, the add value principle you bring. Street dreams, and uh, for a lot of the street culture fans that are watching this show, Jay-Z holds quite a, a, a crown to that ethic of transferring skills from street to, uh, to, to boardroom. Um, do you think there is a level of street knowledge that you have to, that I feel like you acquire from, from the gutter to the, to, to the boardroom? And I think people can well, feel I've that. Well, no, it's all the same. You reckon? Yeah. It's all, it's like, it's all the same. Same, same principle, different mm. language. Okay. Right? So 
the one thing I have actually noticed about this um, corporate world, mm. they're not very ethical. Mm-hmm. There's not a lot of integrity. No. Do you understand? So yeah. with the street, there was a lot more integrity over money than there was purpose, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. In this world I'm going in, it's all about their purpose, their benefit, and if business works, it works, and it don't matter. They're just ruthless. Does that, ta- does that, does that co- cause friction between your team ethics of no, together? No, I'll tell you why. Because what I've realised is why there's not a lot of sort of ethical people in business because they've got too many safety cushions. Elaborate. Well, for argument's sake, if I'm a criminal mm-hmm. and I take a product off you mm. and I owe you £100,000, I hope to pay you that £100,000 no matter what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. If I take drugs off you, if I take jewellery off you, if I take merchandise off you, whatever I take off you, if I owe yeah. you money, mm. yeah, I've got to pay you. Mm-hmm. Right? Or I've got a problem. Mm-hmm. In the business world, it doesn't work like that. I get you. Right? It doesn't work like mm. that. And this is the thing that just mm. blew my mind. Mm. Right? So in the business world, if you run up a debt that you can't pay, mm. you liquidate your company. Mm. And then you're not liable for no debt. So the reason why these people can make so many mistakes is because they're protected by the law. Yeah. When we make mistakes, we're getting hammered, killed, shot, stabbed and put in prison. Knock on the door, people. And this is the thing, like... And this is the madness, right? So just imagine, right... Just imagine you're a villain, right? And you've got three million quid, right? So then all of a sudden you start doing business, 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 and you have so much problems, you end up without a penny, mm. right? Your skin. You've got to start again from mm. scratch. Mm. You've got to start again, and you ain't got a penny in your pocket. No one's going to want to do business because you're skin. So then you're they can off. smell that coming a mile off. So you're basically me yeah. effed, right? Mm. Flip that into a business world. Right, mm. and you hit bankruptcy. Right, the minute you're bankrupt, right, there is a system in place, yeah, to get you back on your feet and earning money. There's government approved and government backed, and they will borrow you whatever you need as long as you've got a business plan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, you <know> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are people doing out there with crime? Like, yeah, yeah, it's true. I mean, th- that puts it in complete context of like why it's. Pointless exercise. Uh, come on, man. Like, it's totally pointless. Mm. And the only reason that crime, violence, stabbings and shootings happen is so the people at the top can live a beautiful life. Mm. Yeah, the rest is just street credentials and, and just trying to be... Yeah, n- the knowledge, mm. isn't it? Yeah. Trying to be... It's, mate, mm. You know what? It's, it's crazy. Mm. But I see so many repairable issues and in mm. society and all it needs is the right platform. So we're creating a platform to train and employ entrepreneurs because I'll put it out here because I'm putting it out everywhere. My aim, goal, drive and passion, right, from 50 years of age, which is January the 9th, is to create billionaires, right? That's what I want to do. I'm going to make that... I'll, I'll, go, I'll be first, yeah? No, no, see, 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 see. Anyone can come. Mm. I'm not giving you nothing. I'm not giving you nothing. Uh-huh. I'm making a like you've got to come with a skill. You've got to come with something. I've got a, I've got a network, right? I've got a network. Mm. I've got investors, right? I've got insurmountable cash funds for investment as long as the investment is right. Mm. Okay? Now people don't understand what an investment is. Some people don't understand what an investment is. Right? An investment is where somebody gets involved in your company and helps your company grow. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yep. Now, what they need for their company to grow is a platform. Right? So you have the platform, they have the network to help you grow. Mm-hmm. So then they say, well, we'll take shares of your company and we grow it. And what we need to do is do X, Y, Z. So what we're going to do, we're going to give you a lump of money so you can do X, Y, Z. Then mm-hmm. your company can grow, then we're all going to make money. And then my shares are going to be protected. Mm-hmm. Now, an investment isn't, here's 100 grand, mate, give me my money in six months. Mm. That's not an investment. No, that's not. That's a loan. Right. It's not. It's, it's just an headache. Mm. Right? Yeah. It's an headache, right? <laughs> so right. I'm learning how the business world works now. Mm. Yeah. 
And I can guarantee with a sound business plan and a decent projection, I can get funding for anything. Projects, if you've got land and you want to build something, like anything you want, buildings, you want anything, anything, anything. What I can say, it's got to be in England for now. Mm. We're not dealing out uh, like internationally or... But live stream and things like that, anything you've got going from a media perspective, that's international, isn't it, as well? <sighs> yeah. Um... So you hear that, people, just so you know, just to reiterate, the, 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 the beacons have been uh, lit and uh, Marvin is, is most definitely in the business to talk it, talk that business and, uh, yeah, get a few uh, projects operational, isn't it? So, and what it is, is if anybody, any entrepreneur your ideas, uh. you can email chris at somuchfront.com yeah, or marvin at themarvinherbert.com. But anything to do with business, go to chris at somuchfront.com. Mm because he's the businessman, analyst, puts everything into perspective. Anything personal is me. Anything mm. personal, family is with me. Do you know what I mean? So, mm. yeah, like it's, it's next level. So yeah, is, we've got people it? to go through shit. If you've got it, send it. Let's have a look at it. Mm. We'll go through it. If it's worth anything, mm. we'll tell you what you can do to make it better. Mm. We'll tell you what we can do to make it grow. And we'll tell you where we can add value. And if we have tick, 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 then we're all making dough. Because mm. what I've said to people is this. If I can't add value to you... Which he has, by the way. Yeah, but I'm if I can't add yeah. value to people, yeah, and I'm not yeah. worth nothing. Mm. So, yeah, I get yeah, you. Yeah, so I'm not worth nothing. So I can't come and expect something, mm. right? But if I'm adding value, yeah, and people are growing. So if someone's earning a thousand pound a day, mm. yeah, and I get that, or a thousand pound a month, and I get that into ten thousand pound a month, then I'm entitled. To some shares of that company. Mm -hmm, you know? mm -hmm. So that's all Standard. it is. So I don't want anything but small shares in every company that I'll get involved in. Because that becomes value. a lot. That becomes no, a lot no, over yeah, much. No. Yeah. It's my job to make that a lot. Mm. It's my adv no, so I'm not getting involved in anything that I can't add value to. Mm. Otherwise, I can't guarantee that billionaire status. Yeah. Right? So give me an industry off the top of your head, and let's see if we can get a billionaire out of it. Uh, motors. That's, that's the easiest one in the world. Yeah, I know. Sorry, that was... <laughs> and that, that was what I'm saying, sir. But that's yeah. the easiest one in the world, right? Because now, right now, I'm plugged into most of the high-performance vehicles, rental companies in this company, in this country. Right. right. Europe, Spain, France, Holland, Germany, Belgium. I'm linked with all the cars. I can get you any car you want in Europe. Do you understand what I'm saying? Fuck. So, and I can plug people in certain ways to do certain things. And that's up Leeds, Manchester, so like... Motors, I've got the network for motors, trust me. Wow, okay, oh, let me do another one. All right, so um, sunglasses. Sunglasses, I've just partnered up. Um, I'm part of the Spratly Foundation. Mm -hmm. right, look it up. If you go on there, because um, I can't remember the name of the brand of the glasses, but we've got an optician, an optician scientist, and we're producing glasses to send to Africa for the um, save the kids. Fantastic. Do you know what I mean? So wow. glasses we can do... And glasses are not really... Glasses are something that you can make famous. Just people got to wear them and they've yeah, got to look right. apart. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, like... Yeah, glasses are things you can get out. Glasses are, like, accessories. The accessories you can get out there, man. That's, we can get anything to market. Mm. Get anything to market, you know? And that's the good yeah. thing about the network that I'm plugged into. And that's why I won't ever go back to crime. Mm -hmm. Because these kids I'm having it with, they're multi, multi millionaires. They're only half my age, 30 odd years of age, and 28, 27, and they're fucking Really? They're multi entrepreneurial. Mate, 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 mate. What it is, is what I've learned, right? And I've learned this. See the middle class kids? Mm. By the time, the good ones, by the time they're 18, they're already making thousands of pounds a year. Mm. Like, my daughter's in school, and one of her school friend's brothers is 14 years of age. And he's buying BMWs and Audis already. Is like, this the one with the YouTube channel that's popped? I'm not too sure. They've got this. That's what I'm saying. They've got loads of things. Yeah. Right? So they've got they've got they've got the YouTube channel. They've got the car trader. They've got charities. Like these kids are learning business from an early age. Wow. Do you understand? And this yeah. is why they go on to, to grow because they learn from an early age. We expect to know when we get money. Mm -hmm. You get money. What are you gonna do? What the fuck? You've learned nothing about it. Like now, this kid who's, who's a car trader now at 14, imagine what he's going to know about cars when he's 30. Mm. Do you know what I mean? How ahead of the game is he going to be? And then he's going to be that much of a specialist 
because of his dad and their network, he'll get plugged in a top job somewhere. And being the age he is, he's fearless about money right. because he knows it'll just, he can just turn it around. Is, look, it's the network you got. Mm. Right, so we're plugged into all these networks. We've got the networks. You've just got to come with the right products and we can monetize That's that. All it takes is the right idea, the Listen, right product. Come with the ideas, come with the products, man. Like I tell to everybody, I want to create billionaires. So I'm only getting involved in stuff that I can add value to. Mm -hmm. If I can add value to it and I'm entitled to a certain percentage, I don't want no more, and watch this, I don't want no more than 30% of any company. Right? And then the 30% of that company right. will only come to me if I invest my network, my time, and my money. I want no more than 30% for that. Okay. Right? For my time and my network, it will be no more than 20%. Right? For my time, wow. it will be 10%, and for my um, network, it will be 10%. That is like value. So that doesn't normally terms, happen. Right? Yeah, yeah. So I'll say, you've got an idea, right, there's my network, there's my people, there's my links, there's my finances, there's it gone. Do you understand what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. And I'll get a small percentage of that. And then everyone grows, everybody's happy. Yeah. And I'm that conduit now to... I used to be the conduit in crime. Come to Marth for anything. Hmm. Marth can get anything, right? That's what I was known yeah, for, anything, yeah. right? Get That's anything, right. right. So now I can come to me for anything in business. And I'm not brilliant at it now. No, I'm not perfect at it now. I'm just brilliant with the work ethic. I get about, I'm here and hmm. there and everywhere. Like I was in South London, West London, and now North London today. Hmm. I'm going back to South London, and I've got to go to Manchester, Leeds, and Liverpool before Saturday and then back to London to film on Monday. Do you know what I'm saying, Chad? So it's non-stop. Wow. No, but it's non-stop. And that's what you've got to do to be successful. Yeah, it is. Can I, can I just stay on this subject of work ethic? And can I just have uh, a day in the life of Marv? Like, from, from when... Because I know you're an early bird, too. So from the moment you wake up to the moment... Like, right, every, so how much right, of it's planned? Tell me the story. Right, so I'll give you today, right? Yeah. So I got up today... I had, um, I'm going, bear in mind, I got in yesterday at 2 o'clock in the morning. I got to sleep about 3.30, 4 o'clock. Then I woke up at 10 o'clock. At 12 o'clock, I arranged to have a spa with an up-and-coming young boxer from Brixton. Um, absolutely amazing young boxer, um, John Harding Jr. Yeah, really, really yeah, yeah. Mate, mate. Look out for this kid. Hold this tight. Kid. Oh, look out for this kid coming up. He's, he's, he's got proper talent, mm -hmm. proper, proper, like... The bits that he has to improve are minor. Do you understand? I Once know the he... name. I, I work with the Salem brothers. Yeah, but so them, that little bruise there, I've done that, right? And then I had to go to Global Studios in Leicester Square. Yeah. So I've done a little something in Leicester Square on Paul Chowdhury's podcast. Old title podcast, love, big always. Up, big up, yeah, big, big up, up, big up. Podcast, so <laughs> he says. <laughs> that's what he calls it, really. Our podcast. <laughs> so that's coming out. And then um, from... There, I had to go into the West End. Where did I go? Yeah, South London, the West End, Global, and then I've come here. So I'm I've saying? Got, then I've got to go back to Brixton tonight, then Croydon. Boy. I think that's it tonight, and I've got to be up at six in the morning, or well, seven in the morning, and then we got meetings all day from nine through to, I don't know, I might have to drive someone back to Coventry tomorrow night. I have to get an understanding of where your drive, because I guess when you say you're doing things and that happens, it all just becomes a process and you're just unlocking as you go. But where the, where the hell do you get that? I'll put it this way, right? What I wouldn't wish on anybody is what I've been through, right? So why I've got this work ethic is because I had nothing. Mm. Mm. I know what it's like to go hungry. Mm. Right? I know what it's like, like, I know people fast, right? But they eat at the end of the day. Try fasting for three, four days. Yeah, you fast all the time, don't you? That's That's what I'm saying. You when do. I was a kid, like, but this is what I'm saying to you, right? So the work ethic, you ask where it comes mm -hmm. from. So basically, because I had nothing as a kid, right? I never, ever want to live like that again, mm. ever. So, for argument's sake, if I've got to drive 300 miles to have a decent dinner, I'm fucking driving that 300 miles. <laughs> Do you understand? Like, yeah, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not just hanging around. Like, I'm doing what I'm doing, which is best for my journey. So, mm. it's the work ethic is because I don't ever want to fail. I don't want to fail. I don't want to give up. Like, mm. 
I want to make something of myself. I thought I wanted something different, but now I can see what it is I really want. Is there a fear there attached to that? A fear of what? Not want, wanting to work to succeed and it not happening. Is there a... Is wow, there a... I've never not succeeded, you cunt. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm talking about, you know, that feeling... Talking about the feeling of, like, is there a fear attached to, like, if you Listen, don't eat? let me explain something. Let me explain something. Right. The fear... No, the... No. The fear is, yeah, mm. not being able to eat. Money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, not That's what I mean. having the money to pay for my kids, look after myself, pay them, like, not mm. being able to be that, like, that's yeah, yeah. the fear, right? Mm. But because I can <laughs> smell it, taste it, <laughs> and I've touched it, yeah, I know it exists. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Mm. So I'm not laying down like normal people that ain't been through that shit. And Going at I'm it. Desperate. Uh, I'm depressed. No, I ain't got time for that because I know what's coming. Mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. I know what's coming. These people out here, they've had three meals a day since the day they're born. Complacent. Yeah? No, no, what's that? Normality, right, in a normal living existence, yeah, is you wake up, you have three meals a day, you get your presents, you live your life, you get a job, you da-da-da-da-da-da. But you've never had to go without food for four days regularly. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, like it's crazy. Like, this what I'm saying. To people who haven't had to go without. So unless... You've gone without. You don't know what it's like. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? So, yeah. because I never ever want to put my kids through that. Yeah, I don't need sleep. Failure is my fear. I'm in fear of failing, so I don't want to fail with it. Right today, I'll give you an example. I turned up, John, uh, um, John Arden Jr. to mm-hmm. spa, and for some reason, I'm telling you, but I don't know. And everybody that knows me, right, knows I travel with my gum shields. I travel with my gloves, and I've got three or four gum shields, so I've always got a gum shield. And then, <laughs> one, well, I've got a gum shield in the car. I've got a gum shield in the glove compartment. I've got a gum shield in my bag, and I've got a gum shield down the door. Normally, right? And they're there. Damn. Right. Now, I've gone to the spa, John, today, and there's no gum shields in uh. my car, which is not normal. Trust me. So I thought, oh, I don't know what. I can't not, I can't go in now and say, you know what, I can't spy because I've got no like, gum shield. Yeah, they won't believe you anyway. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. So I've got in, I've had the first four rounds sparring and basically I've clashed heads with him and at that point I said to myself, do you know what, I'm tired, I've got no gum shield, a mistake might happen, I'll call it. You safe. still boxed without the gum shield? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I've got to him, I said, I said to him, I come to the end of the fourth round. As we come to the end of the fourth round, I realised where I'd made a mistake, it was possible for another mistake, and I've got no gum shield. So if yeah. I clash and anything happens, then I'm going to get tea through the lips, yeah. right? So I said to him, um, call it a day today because I've got no gum shield, you know? You know, I've been in without a gum shield. He went, shut up. Yeah. I said, yeah, I, I, my gum shield disappeared, and I'm not coming out with excuses. And he was like, oh, they've got the gum shields downstairs. So I said, oh, actually, so I've run downstairs, got a gum shield, melted it, put it in, and carried on. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's. I can't um, believe that. That's mad. Yeah, it's just you gotta do it, in ya. Then I've got to come here. Then I've got to go out the road. Then I've got, like, I've got to do it. Can I ask you something? Maybe it's a bit personal. Maybe not. You've probably talked about it before. The wait, how dangerous is it for you to be boxing? If you get like an injury to the head or anything like that. See, I don't focus on all that stuff. But what if it was to happen that you get? Right, well, let me explain something, chap. Right. I've been shot in the face twice. I got shot in my forehead and shot in my eye, yeah? I'm pretty sure, if not adamantly supported, yeah? Mm. Uh, if anything was going to happen, it would have happened then, son. Reckon. Yeah, come on. Okay. I'll tell you what... what Are you what, sure? Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, 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 what you hear with me. It won't be boxing because I'm a fighting boxing mm. man. It's not going to happen. Mm. What will happen is um, ice skating, bungee jumping, yeah. jet skiing... They're the sort of things where you'd hear about me hurting myself and killing myself or crippling myself. Because you don't have to control Sod's it. Law. Yeah. Same as Michael Schumacher, Christopher Reeve. Yes, yeah, right. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah, it's true. Right, Superman fell off it's a so horse. It's so true. It's so right? true, yeah. He, he, mm. Was it Superman fell off a horse and... Um, crippled his neck, wasn't it? Yeah, and he's crippled forever. Yeah, and the driver. And Schumacher yeah. skiing. God, that was really sad, that. Both yeah, of them are sad. Both of them. But like you say, it's the thing that you don't normally do that you're not used to f- controlling. No. That's the thing that gets them. And that's why I'll never do anything sods law. For me now, nah, it's just about doing selfless acts to help other people because I took so much growing up. Mm. Like, I'm not proud of the person I was, right? So, you, you should take liberties with people. Do you know what I mean? And if you weren't strong enough to deal with things, then 
it got taken from you and you got told to sit down and wind your neck in. Do you mm. know what I mean? And some people got beaten, stabbed and shot mm. for getting moved the way, strategically moved out of the way. Like, you've got to have bag in you, you've got to have confrontation. That's why that world's so shit. There's no unity, there's no coming together. It's all ag, it's all yeah, drama. Right. And then what it is, is if everybody worked together, everybody would be Keiko. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Everybody would be Keiko if they yeah. all got on with each other. Yeah, that's right. Just do what you're good at. So that's what my initiative for 2022 is, is bringing communities together, like even warring communities, like stop this stupid... Like, stupid everyone yeah. talks about racism, right? When black people kill more black people than anybody. Mm -hmm. Do yeah. you get it? Statistically, yeah. Like, come on, man, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, and then you say road yeah. people. Road people more, kill more people than anybody. Like, they kill all their own people. Yeah, like, all their own people, yeah. All their own people. Like, we're all killing each all other. Yeah. Saying, all because one of the olders is manipulating all of you, yeah, to have ag with them and then giving you the guns. These guns don't just fucking pop out of the ground, they come from far away. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? And people mm. giving it to these youngsters. But these youngsters, like myself, yeah, and like I have to say it because I was fucking stupid. Like, why would you want to really risk going to prison for the rest of your life because somebody said yeah. something or stole some bit of money? Like, you're yeah. going to prison forever, but your olders would make you feel you've got to do that shit. That's right. They're not doing it. Tell your olders to go and do it. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So the youngsters have got to stop doing this shit because they say youth is wasted on the young. That's Marvin right. Herbert's going to try and change that fucking cliche, right, in exactly. 2022. Youth ain't wasted on the young. I'm going to create billionaires. This fucking society. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Absolutely right. And, you know, when I think about, you know, I know it's a distant cry from our reality, but suicide bombers and stuff, you think, Jeff, why do young people do that? Because they've got a mental, someone no, above just, them. No, it's, not, same, it's just programming. Is that programming? Right, listen, listen, listen. Right. I was programmed, right? I was programmed, right? For 42 years. 42 years, right? To believe that I was sensible, risking my liberty every single fucking day for a price I couldn't put my finger on, stabbing, shooting and getting nicked for murder, mm. right? Going to prison, yeah? And I'm, I'm sensible for that. The fuck? Yeah. For 42 years, yeah, I believed the straight goers couldn't earn more money than criminals. Yeah. I believe that wholeheartedly, but it's fucking a myth. Straight goers earn hundreds of millions. The richest people on the planet, yeah, are straight goers. Mm. Criminals are not fucking the richest people on the planet. They've got the biggest egos and the most materialistic asset. But reality is this, right? A watch, right? I don't wear them no more because a watch is in society... 2% of your net value. Yeah, no, not your net value, your, your net worth. Mm -hmm. Right? Right? Your house is supposed to be 10%. Do you understand? Yeah, so I do. all these people wearing these 50 grand watches, 50 grand watches, yeah, where's your million pound dust? Because you won't get it. You won't get it. You ain't got it. Yeah. You might rent them. You might borrow them. You might come across them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the minute you try and own them, you're in jail or they're taking it off you. So what the fucking point in it all? You've lived such a life, brother, and one that is actually reflecting on the uh, on the soundtrack, the, the tunes that you're he, you're making an album, bro. And well, it's, we're making albums, but, but it sounds like it sounds like an audio biopic of like it's a concept album. And when I was listening, because we, of course, of course, Kells gets the privy of the tunes before anybody else. When we were listening to it, mate, like I, 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 it, your life. Should we it's... play the beginning of the last one? Yeah, go on then. Right. Yeah, it'd be rude not to, wouldn't it? This is it? like fast lane. This yeah. is the fast lane. Put it up against that, that oh. microphone and, yeah. So. Enjoy. You're privy to this, man. This is we'll like... Give them a, we'll give them... <coughs> exclusive. Exclusive. Yeah, exclusive. It is super exclusive. Um, and as a man that's experienced so much, to have it all on one tune is like, what? Yeah. Young Wets, yeah, it, it, yeah, exclusive, in the building. Exclusive. When you're living in a fast lane, there's no car that's quick enough. Do you like to fight when you miss the lock? Mm. 40 with ammonia hits the top. Press can't be around when you're this erratic. In the crib and pulls out a gun. Used to fly to Liverpool in the chopper. Took 50 minutes and shit was done. Into the fast lane, put your belt is on. Horse mm. to the dogs, a thousand strong. It's the life of more than eight for the fate. Hard enough to be blow smoke and the clouds are gone. <laughs> oh, that's dumb. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> 
Yo, it's coming. He got, he got, he got the storyteller telling Damn. the story. Oh, tell you what, it's gonna be good. I can't wait. The book, the programs, the movies. No, no, wait. The book, the program, the movies. Of course, you've still got the look live the, stream the, the, the content. The logo, the logo, the, logo. the key. Come on, man. For We're what? Come on. Come on. For those of you who ain't watching and listening, he's got the hoodie. The website's going to be out for soon what? as well, man. The website's going to be out soon. Of the, um, all the merch site, the merch site. I'm going to mm. have a merch site up. Mm. This is coming soon, now, which is sick. Can I tell a Can I tell a Marvin story? I think I want to tell us. I want to tell you a story. I go on, go on. About you, that I I still I hold it. I I. I still think back to it and I still kind of have a little giggle. So, we were at your studio, Milton Keynes, old tight, and right. uh, you're the studio fucking decked out and lovely, you know. And we were doing your first, I think it was one of your first podcasts, me and Guam, big up Guam, old tight. Big we, up Guam. Yeah, in the we, were doing, we were doing this filming and there was a geezer next door and I have no idea who it was, but he was on the phone, he was talking away and he was really loud, really, wasn't he? Was, you, you'll know where I'm going with this. It was really loud and, and you, you were like, can, can you hear him? And we were like, yeah, yeah. And he's, you're like, I might go and tell him to shut up in a minute because we're going to start recording with me. I was like, yeah, yeah. And Guan was still carrying on. So we carried on. And then about three minutes later, you come through the door and you're like, is he still talking? Well, I'm going to go over there and talk to him. So here's this. <laughs> it's Marv going to the door, the, the, the room next door. And you're this. <laughs> okay, cool. And you come back in and goes, well, I think I've sorted it. And he sits back down. And I swear to God, I fucking, like, literally a few minutes later, you get up and you literally like, he's fucking talking again. And off you go, right? And me and Guam were like, we're now listening in, like that. And it's like, <laughs> And then you walk back in and you go, tell him. If I have to fucking tell him one more time, you're going to have to hold me down, boys. <laughs> so funny. It was almost like the, the, the lion is ready to fucking go. And you go, you go, I don't want to hurt him. I don't want to, I don't want to go back to my old ways. I cannot deal with it if he, if he does it one more time. <laughs> it's killed me, man. It got me. <laughs> and that's what, see what it is, right? A lot of people don't realise how hard it is, right? Yeah. But like, that was at the very beginning of my transition with mm. Milton Keynes. I, mean, mm. I, 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 I realised that that building there was the ultimate challenge and test for me. Mm. Because if I'd have beat anybody up in that building, then I would have failed. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But the most I ever done there was grab someone. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, grab someone. It's a lot I think I might give that. someone a little slap. Mm. I might just give someone a little slap or something. Mm. I've n I never really got aggressive up there or flick. It is a lot to manage, though. That was like six, what, six studio rooms, two floors? Four studios, two floors go, and yeah. a classroom. And it was, you know, it was, it was decent. It was good. I enjoyed yeah. it up there. We done a lot of work out there with the youngsters. I'll touch Charlie Schloff as well. Yeah, for big up Charlie. Yeah, that's right. Back soon. Back mm -hmm. soon. Hold tight. Mm. Yeah, that was a. I, I felt that was like a golden introduction of like the plans that you were making. It's crazy to think. But that how... was what three years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little shy of that. Yeah, three years ago. I mean, God, so much has changed. I mean, life has changed. Two thousand eighteen. You sure? No, two thousand nine. Ah, it was the tail end of 2018. You're absolutely right. Yeah, because so I got to Downing Street 2019. Mm. I, mean, I remember you, you was uh, 2000... Mm. Yeah, it was 2000. It was when we were still in the studio. Mm. Golden era, brother. It's mad how things develop and with time, because I've really got the right strategy and the right team, man. It's oh. sick. You're very strategy-driven, and I, I've noticed that about you. Like, well, in these... In these... In these... Right... Could be spicy what I'm going to say here, but I know my brother is very calculative in how he responds. I feel like there was a there was a real drive on your social presence. There was a real um, there was a lot of sending. There was a lot of kind of announcing certain things and telling stories and interconnecting with different people that were out on social. Media. Like, did that get a lot for you? It, it helped me exist on the social media platform mm. because when I when I started on the platform. I never done it from an egotistical perspective, right? Mm. So I've I'll, I'll done it from I'm going to show the dark side of criminality and that it isn't good to be a criminal and it isn't sensible and mm. you're not great at what you've done. It's a failing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So when I sh started with that, Sean mm. Atwood, I was basically saying drug kingpin. Mm. Okay. I had a raid for 10,000 people and you earned 40 grand. What kind of kingpin is that? Exit the kingpin, do you know what I mean? 10,000 people, 20 pound each, it's 200 grand. 10,000 people, 
ticket in the gaff, ten pound mm. is hundred grand. Mm -hmm. Twenty pound is two hundred grand. Yeah, plus you're the kingpin of ecstasy. So you're gonna sell all the ease in the building. Getting for a pound from Holland, so he said. Right. Selling for 10, 15 quid in America. How the fuck have you made 40 grand, bruv? You've got 10,000 people in a rave. I used to nick 60 grand profit for my drink, mm. yeah, out of a rave that never even had a 1,000 people in it. How does that work? So what I've done, I've exposed, exposed people's lies and the realities of this world and the fakeness of what it is. And that's why I won't engage with all these people when they try to reach out and say things like, look... I never tried to say anything about anybody. They've mm. told the world who they are. He told the world how much drugs he took. He told the world how many lap dancers he married. He told the world how many prisons he was in. Mm. I mean, the only thing he never done was show the world any photos of him in the American prisons. Mm. When everyone in the American prisons has all got photos of everybody. You're allowed to take photos of everything in there. Oh, yeah. yeah, you are. Wow. Yeah, and they've all got photos. My pal's got loads of them. You're going to see soon. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Fucking around. It's next level, bro. Coming really? soon. But yeah, look, I'm not here to ruin anybody. I'm just here to tell nothing but the truth about the criminal fraternity and change the narrative so youngsters don't make mistakes and go to prison and do bad things. So, Did it ever go on top, though? Did it ever feel like it was on top at any point where, you know, the social media was going absolutely fucking crazy? For me? Yeah, you. Why? I don't know. Um, it goes crazy for insecure people. Okay. It goes crazy for people that are not confident about themselves. Mm. It goes crazy for people that are lying. Mm. Yes. yes. I don't... Uh, I see. Right, so watch this, right? I'm going right. to I'm gonna say this now, right? Because I don't video stuff like this, mm. right? But I was shopping the other day. I was shopping... No, I'm, I'm, I'm not... I don't say it to be snobby, but I will shop at Waitrose, right? Because mm -hmm. I'll get the right products in um, my veg from... All the alkaline stuff I need, mm -hmm. I get it all from weight trials. If I go to any other stop, they haven't got everything. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I've only mm. got some things sometimes and it pisses me off. But weight trials have got everything I need on the healthy principle, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll go there. And I've come out there, there's a young kid outside, a young bunga, a Bulgarian kid, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Can't speak a word of English, but he's skin, right? So I always get caught between rock and hard places like this because I think, what would I do if I was in a foreign country mm -hmm. and I couldn't speak the language? Yeah. Do you understand? Like, how would I live? So what I've done, I've walked along the road and there's like a, a van where they sell food, pizzas, baking stuff, teas, coffees and all that. So I've gone over there, I've had a look at where it all comes. So, so I've gone back to the kids to come in. So I said, right, choose anything you want, right? Have a dinner, mm. a meal, a snack, a bit of chocolate, mm. a drink and a soup, yeah? Sweet. Get, get all this stuff, get yeah. all this stuff. So he's gone, yeah, got it all. I think it comes to about 11, 12, maybe 13. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. So he's coming out. So I've given it all to him. He's walked away happy. Right? So what I've said to the geezer behind the jump, I said, double that up. It's only 20 odd quid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, double that up. And when he comes back tomorrow, give me again. That's so sick. Yeah? Okay. Because like, I don't want the world to see me do it. I'm not going to video that and put it up. Mm -hmm. But they're the things I do daily. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah, like, yeah. I've actually given, like, taken people off the street, put them in my car and taken them somewhere. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't need to video that because people on the lowest part of the low only want to see, be seen when they're doing well. Yeah. So I'm not going to embarrass them and put them on video, like, mm. what I'm doing for them. Do you understand? Yeah, yes, I do, I do it's, understand. It's, it's, it's about doing things selflessly for people. So people don't see what I do. People, like, people don't see how I work. Mm. Like, in the last... Four weeks, I can honestly say I've stopped four situations turning sour where people have actually come together now. Do you know what I mean? Like, wow. there was a situation going on in a couple of areas, right? It mm. could have been very toxic and very traumatic for a lot of people. And then basically, I've turned up to do some work with a few people, spoke to this one, spoke to that one, next one, and we're all working together. Mm. And everybody's happy. Do you understand? Yeah, so, yeah. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's, there's a power in this selfless harmony stuff. Mm. There's, a, there's, a, there's a power in this adding value. So I'm out there looking for everybody to, who wants to add value to people that have networks to help because I'm networking for a bigger network. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm networking for a bigger network. I want to create more opportunities and I can't create opportunities without a bigger network. So right. we're moving into the art world now. We're moving into the NFT world now. We're yeah. moving into the film, the books, the media, the football. The drama. He's got a cup as well. He's got a damn cup that 
explain the cup. It goes from it goes from black, and then all of a sudden, here comes Marvin's Marv face all over the cup. Come on! Yeah. So you put it's a black cup, and mm. when you put the water in it, it the picture Heats of up. my face comes up. Nothing but the truth. Nothing but the truth, yeah. right? Or you so... can buy the white ones. Have a look. When we launch the website, I think it'll be next week. <laughs> yeah. I think we might get a website ready for Christmas. <laughs> Brother, it's been a fucking pleasure to. Oh, and my a big shout out to our mate Steam to you inside the to place. You, Steam, come yeah. on, bigger. Oh boy. Uh, and we're going to be around the table together soon. That's what I'm going to say. Very soon, very soon. That'll be the next one, won't it? We'll get yeah, around the whole one, table. Yeah. We'll see your work ethic now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> see how I think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, happy investor, me. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm on the lookout. I'll get that. Well, actually, we've already got a place in mind, don't we? We're going to yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah, we've got it. We've got enough space to have a full blown TU conversation of a, of a particular era that is very dear to all of us. From Road to Riches. Oh, road to Riches. That'd be the title of it. Sick. Fantastic. From road to riches. Yeah, love it. Love it, man. my brother. All day. Oh, big shout, Drax as well. Big up, Drax. Spoke to him today. That's it. Yesterday. That's it. That's yeah. it. Yeah, love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. So stay safe. Stay focused. Stay positive. Yeah. And remember, for what? Yeah. Don't be risking your liberty. For what? Don't be chasing them grooming mindset people that want to give you stuff that can put you in prison. Exactly. Anyone who wants to give you a product that can put you in prison, they're no value, man. Yeah. Anyone who wants to protect you from going to prison are good people. That's right. Prison ain't no place for no human being. Exactly. Facts. Facts. Old tight Marvin, killer killer podcast out loud. was out of fashion. All right, don't talk to anyone. I wouldn't, God damn it. All right, stay lucky, people. Peace. <laughs>